Mr. Ralph. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Go ahead, Rick. There's, there's one other piece in response to, uh, to Kim's comments just recently about there's all of these different places to go. Well, yes. You must be flexible, and you must counter each one of the new pieces that uh, is thrown at you. It's called, principle of war, maneuver. You must be able to maneuver around and take advantage of what the enemy does or doesn't do, find his weakness, and move forward. So, again, you're back to one of the principles of, key principles of war, and it's just called maneuver. And it answers, essentially, from my perspective, answers your question or your comment, uh, uh, Kim. Okay, now, Ralph. All right, let's give the people some, uh, some resources to get information. On. I need you to speak up, Ralph. Ralph, I need you to speak up and louder All right, phone, and, uh, a couple of good websites Very good. help you find information about some of these issues. Number one, as Dr. Le- Le- Lebo said, we're working on um, a natural clinical trials program, and the website for that is easy. It's www.naturalclinicaltrials.org. Uh, good website. Uh, if you've got a small vitamin company, you need to go there. If you've got a small natural product company, you need to go there. If you've got a big company, you need to go there. Uh, naturalclinicaltrials.org. Another very helpful website for you uh, is our Food Freedom e-journal. It's, um, it's an e-journal that's filled with uh, videos on practical information on how to grow your own beyond organic biodynamic food. And that was uh, uh, videotaped a number of months ago at, at the Natural Solutions Center uh, in the highlands of Panama where General Burt and, and Dr. Rima live. Uh, and uh, it's excellent, 105 minutes of, of really good video. That's Triple W, Food Freedom Journal. Dot org. And, of course, our main website is healthfreedomusa.org, where you'll find links to all of that stuff. But I think that these things uh, uh, link into useful information. And, and then there's... To, to the food safety issue at some point along the way, because we need to talk about one of the other major assaults, which is a, a law pending in the U.S. Senate, uh, which is S-510. And we also need to talk about, being here of our time, that that in major international assault on our health freedom, namely Codex Alimentarius. Let's start with the U.S. food bill, can we? Sure. Uh, there was a bill uh, introduced a number of uh, months ago in the House of Representatives. Uh, we uh, made our views on that bill well known to the people in the House. Uh, they did pass it, but they uh, added to it some language that was a little protective. This basically is a bill that industrializes all food production. It forces family farms and ranches community gardens, um, you know, uh, farmers markets and all the rest into the same mold as the giant corporate big agra, a mold that is obviously not meant to fit those local and, uh, and natural uh, producers, and it will destroy them. How? So we've been pl- how? Well, by mandating, for example, uh, very expensive seed sorting equipment, which will make it almost impossible for... Um, for uh, uh, heritage seed companies to continue in operation. Let me but, be but the big guys like that. Monsanto, Forbes' is, uh, uh, business of the year, in fact, they'll be okay. It's a big barrier against entry. It's almost the Monsanto monopoly guarantee law. Let, anyway, me, let, me, let me just interject something yeah. there, Ralph. Uh, people who are not farmers don't understand that seed saving is absolutely essential to independent farming. Farmers save their best plants, let them grow the seed, and then they replant the next year with that seed. The equipment can cost as little as $40. There's never been a case of contamination or terrorism or problem of any kind from seed that's sorted this ancient way. But in order to meet the requirements of this bill, a farmer would have to have a factory that costs between a million and a million and a half dollars for each type of seed he grows, one for corn, one for soy, one for alfalfa, one for broccoli, one for carrots, and little farmers who are marginal economically anyway will be criminalized just by the seed-saving requirements. Monsanto wishes to make seed-saving illegal on a global basis so that the only seeds that can be accessed are from Monsanto. 
GMO <laughs> seeds from Monsanto. GMO <laughs> seeds from Monsanto. This is just one tiny provision of this monstrous Monsanto dream bill. And Monsanto is really in the business of globalizing and owning the molecular structure of seeds. And of animals. Monsanto owns the pig. Every pig on the planet is Monsanto's legal genetic property because of a court decision about three years ago. An insane court decision, by the way. So we're talking about changing the law in the United States and elsewhere to make the growing of clean food, you know, your tomatoes in your garden or your chives on your windowsill, a criminal act. And therefore, by teaching people how to grow their own food in tiny spaces, for instance, a four-foot by four-foot garden in your closet under a grow light if necessary can supply your family of four people with all of the vegetables you need on an ongoing permanent basis at virtually no cost. But that is soon to become a highly political act and producing your own food so that you can stay healthy and you don't have to buy genetically altered, damaged, codex poisoned food is a political act. It is takedown. Talk about Codex Alimentaris. Describe it for us, please. Before I do that, Ralph, did I, did I short circuit your... Not at all. I just want to point out to people that there is on our homepage in the Actions to Take section... Uh, a place for you to click on and send a message to your senators when uh, about about this bill that's now pending in the Senate, S-510. When that bill was marked up, as they say, in front of the HELP Committee, which is the Senate Committee, back in December, uh, you can go to their website and actually watch the video. Senator Tom Harkin had to begin by saying that they had received a few thousand emails over the weekend. Actually, it was 150,000 emails that we generated. Right? Uh, a few thousand emails, and he wanted to assure everyone that, the, that what we call DSHEA, the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act of 1994, the law that gives us the right to speak freely about nutrients, or somewhat freely, uh, that law is still governed in the United States, not Codex. He wanted to make that clear to the public. And the fact that they were in the law, they're going to ask the FDA to recommend to Congress how to harmonize with Codex and other international regulations, does not mean that Congress uh, isn't going to support the Shea. Well, he's responding directly to our pushback. And the truth of the matter is, that's exactly what they're trying to do. <laughs> they're trying to, to get around the law, which was passed unanimously by Congress, which allows us to speak more or less freely about nutrients. And have access more to nutrients, right. not just speak about them, but have access to them. Right. And, uh, and, and basically, uh, that's, that's what's at risk in this new law, in addition to the fact that the so-called food safety provisions are, are, are designed to destroy independent food producers. Let me, let me orient people to Codex Alimentarius, which sounds like an intestinal parasite. <laughs> Definitely does. And I hope I don't have it. <laughs> oh, well, we do have it, and we need to cure it. And this is one that Wormwood will not You may cure. need an antibiotic for it. <laughs> yes, indeed. Now, the, the best, uh, speaking of antibiotic, the universal antibiotic is nanosilver, not colloidal silver, but nanosilver. Nanosilver could completely eliminate the entire antibiotic market. 90% of the antibiotics sold worldwide by Big Pharma are sold in the animal raising industry to keep the animals alive in the inhuman uh, uh, food factory uh, environments to which they're subjected. So antibiotics are an enormous business, not just for people, but nine times more for animals. Antibiotics would be completely eliminated if we started using safe, cheap, available nano silver. So the European Food Supplements Directive on January 1, 2010, banned the sale of nanosilver in Europe totally and completely. Last week on our uh, Health Freedom Radio, uh, which is available at www.thefreedomlink.com, dot org the freedom link dot org uh, and we broadcast every Wednesday from eight 
to 10 p.m. Eastern. Last week, 